welcome to daily evening prayer, right to at the Church of Our Savior. We welcome all those who are here in person and those who are joining us virtually. Daily evening prayer. <clears throat> prayer right to begins on page 115 in the Book of Common Prayer. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Yours is the day, O God, yours also the night. You established the moon and the sun. You fixed all the boundaries of the earth. You made both summer and winter. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Dear friends in Christ, here in the presence of Almighty God, let us kneel in silence and with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins, that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. <coughs> Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done. And by what we have not done, we have not loved you with all our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and will humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have a mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make speed to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, it is now, and will be forever. Amen. We say together, O gracious light, found on page 118. O gracious light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed, now as we come to the setting of the sun, and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing your praises, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices. O Son of God, O giver of life, and to be glorified through all the worlds. Tonight's appointed psalm is Psalm 49, found on page 652 of the Book of Common Prayer. And let's Read this responsibly by whole verse. Hear this, all you peoples. Hearken, all you who dwell in the world, you of high degree and low, rich and poor, together. My mouth shall speak of wisdom, and my heart shall meditate on understanding. I will incline my ear to a proverb, and set forth my riddle upon the heart. Why should I be afraid in evil days, and the wickedness of those that my evil surround me? The wickedness of those who put their trust in their goods, and boast of their great riches. We can never ransom ourselves, or deliver to God the price of our God. For the ransom of our life is so great, that we should never have enough to pay it. The Lord can live forever and ever, and can never see the grave. For we see that the wise die also, like the dull and stupid they perish, and leave their wealth to those who come after them. The grave shall be their home forever, their dwelling place from generation to generation, though they call the lands after their own names. Even though honored, they cannot live forever. They are like the beasts that perish. 
Like a flock of sheep, they are destined to die. Death is their shepherd. They go straightway to the grave. Therefore, shall wake the way, and the land of the dead shall be their home. But God will ransom my life. He will snatch me from the grasp of death. Do not be envious when some become rich, or when the grandeur of our bounty is increased. For they will carry nothing away at their death, nor will their grandeur follow them. Those they talk finally of themselves while they will live, and give praise to their successful They shall join the company of their forebears, who will never see the light again. Those, Those who are honored but have no understanding are like the beasts that perish. Glory, Glory to, to the Father, and to the Son, and to the, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The epistle for tonight is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 2, 1 to 13. When I came to you, brothers and sisters, I did not come proclaiming the mystery of God to you in lofty words or wisdom. For I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I came to you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. My speech and my pro proclamation were not plausible words of wisdom but with a demonstration of the Spirit and of power, so that your faith might rest not on human wisdom, but on the power of God. Yet among the mature we do speak wisdom, though it is not a wisdom of this age or of the rulers of this age who are doomed to perish, but we speak God's wisdom, secret and hidden, which God decreed before the ages for our glory. None of the rulers of this age understood this, for if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, what no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor the human heart conceived, what God has prepared for those who love him, these things God has revealed to us through the Spirit. For the Spirit searches everything, even the depths of God. For what human being knows what is truly human, except the human spirit that is within? So also no one comprehends what is truly God's, except the spirit of God's, of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit that is from God, so that we may understand the gifts bestowed on us by God. And we speak these things in words not taught by human wisdom, but taught by the Spirit, interpreting spiritual things to those who are spiritual. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. And now saying together the Magnificat on page 119 of the Book of Common Prayer. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has gathered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of the servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen.
the Holy Gospel of our Savior according to Mark. As soon as they left the synagogue, Jesus entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told him about her at once. He came and took her by hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sundown, they brought to him all who were sick and possessed with demons, and the whole city was gathered around the door. And he cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. And he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went out to his deserted place. And there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him. When they found him, they said to him, everyone is searching for you. He answered, let us go to a neighboring towns so that I may proclaim the message there also that it is where I came out to do. And he went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. A leper came to him, begging him, and kneeling, he said to him, If you choose, you can make me clean. Moved with pity, Jesus stretched out his hand and touched him and said to him, I do choose. He made him clean. Immediately, the leprosy left him and he was made clean. After sternly warning him, he sent him away at once, saying to him, See that you say nothing to anyone, but go, show yourself to the priest and offer for your cleansing what Moses commanded as a testimony to them. But he went out and began to proclaim it freely and to spread the word so that Jesus would no longer go into a town openly, but stayed out in the country and people came to him from every quarter. The Gospel of our Savior. Praise to you, Lord Christ. I'm really struck by the words of Paul's letter sent to the early Christian community in Corinth. And in his opening sentence, he says, When I came to you, brothers and sisters, I did not come proclaiming the mystery of God to you in lofty words or wisdom. For I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I came in weakness and in fear and much trembling. I'm really struck by the fact that Paul is referring to the mystery of God. And a very dear friend of mine, a fellow Episcopal priest, had said that he believes that perhaps the best word for God is mystery because in our humanness the the awesome nature of God in many ways is beyond our human comprehension that there is much about the mystery of God God who created the world and put everything on earth that we and all living beings needed in order to thrive God who created us in God's very own image, that creating that divine spark within us, that God that is always present with us, waiting for us to be open, open to what God may be saying to us, to be open to what God may be teaching us, to be open to that stirring within us, in this lifelong journey of faith that we have, where we deepen our relationship with God. We deepen our relationship with God through prayer. And we need to set aside time, whether it's like Wednesday evenings when we gather here in the serenity and quietness of the sanctuary, to be still, to be still in the presence of God to open our minds and hearts to hear what God may be telling us, to be intentional 
about pushing away all those things that distract us in our daily routines, the things that compete for our attention, the things that keep us running around in the rat race of life. That for us, I think there is a need for to be intentional. Set aside time every day, even if it's five minutes at the beginning of the day to thank God for a new day or at the end of the day to take five minutes and be grateful for God's presence in your life that day, for the grace that you might have witnessed that day. But if we do these things, if we set it intentionally set aside time to be still, to pray, we begin to see how God is working in our lives, transforming in a way that brings us a deep inner peace, a deep inner peace that I believe that we are all longing for. And so I invite you in the season of Lent to be intentional in setting aside that time for silence, for quiet prayer, for nurturing your relationship with God. Amen. Page 120 in the Book of Common Prayer, let us say together the Song of Simeon. Lord, you now have set your servant free to go in peace as you have promised. For these eyes of mine have seen the Savior, whom you have prepared for all the world to see, a light to enlighten the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. And continuing on with the Apostles' Creed on page 120. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, he was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Using Suffrages A on page 121. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let, Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. The Collect 
for today. Almighty God, who has revealed to your church your eternal being of glorious majesty and perfect love as one God in trinity of persons, give us grace that, like your Bishop Gregory of Nyssa, we may continue steadfast in the confession of this faith and constant in our worship of you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Call it for Wednesday in the first week of Lent. Bless us, O God, in this holy season in which our hearts seek your help and healing. And so purify us by your discipline that we may grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A call for aid against perils. Be our light in the darkness, O Lord, and in your great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of your only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. A call for the presence of Christ. Lord Jesus, stay with us, for evening is at hand, and the day is past. Be our companion in the way. Kindle our hearts and awaken hope, that we may know you as you are revealed in Scripture and the breaking of bread. Grant this for the sake of your love. Amen. Keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work or watch or weep this night, and give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, Lord Christ. Give rest to the weary. Bless the dying. Soothe the suffering. Pity the afflicted. Shield the joyous, and all for your love's sake. Amen. I invite your own intersection, intercessions and thanksgivings at this time, either silent or aloud. Born again to the Mount Whitney train, the protection of all the civilians, the peace. prayer I'd like to share for Archbishop's well-being, Cottrell, for the Ukraine. God of peace and justice, we pray for the people of Ukraine today. We pray peace for peace and the laying down of weapons. We pray for all those who fear for tomorrow, that your spirit of comfort would draw near to them. We pray for those with power over war or peace, for wisdom, discernment, and compassion to guide their decisions. Above all, we pray for all your precious children at risk and in fear, that you will hold and protect them. We pray in the name of Jesus, the Prince of Peace. Amen. Amen. Sang together the great thanksgiving found on page 125. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Amen.
Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us this evening. We hope you have a blessed week.